All right, guys, welcome to another episode, special episode of the Strength Coach Podcast. We do this every month, almost every month, with Vince Gabriel, founder of Gabriel Fitness Performance and the Fitness Business University and Kiss Marketing. Last month, if you recall, we did not have Vince on. Joe Hatchie was on. What a great story. Uh, guys, if you haven't listened to that, you got to get check out Joe. Not only from the business perspective, he's definitely an interesting guy and uh he's doing some really really cool stuff uh so vance thanks for this but i feel like i haven't seen you in a while thanks Ant. hey you're kind of coming in and out a little bit like it's almost staticky really okay yeah me, uh, i don't know see. if it's i don't think it's an internet thing it sounds almost like just static yeah that's when weird you're talking okay let me check something here let me go i just want to go on the sound and see if it's too loud or um I got this Jabra rec your recommendation. <laughs> you got um, one? The Jabra, the Jabra. Oh, the Jabra. The okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Does that sound better at all or no? Uh Vince, can you uh is it is it still keep, keeps is talking. it still going like that? Is it uh we're doing the Vince Gabriel, founder of Gabriel Fitness Performance yep, that's Fitness good. Yep, that works. It's fine. Yeah, okay, maybe better. it was just yeah. too loud. Yeah. Cool. cool. Um all right, hold on. Let me uh, let me redo that. All right, guys, welcome to another special episode of the Strength Coach Podcast. We do this every month with Vince Gabriel, founder of Gabriel Fitness Performance Fitness Business University and Kiss Marketing. Actually, not every month. If you if you're following along, last month we did it with Joe Hashi. So if you haven't listened to that, Joe is uh, number one, a super successful business guy. He works with Vince, and he's a really interesting guy. It was a great episode. So, uh, Vince, what's up? I feel like I haven't seen you in a while. What's up, brother? Great to be here. Um, I'm kind of lying. I, it's nice to have the Vince Gabriel break for me. Um, but, um, um, and uh, but I do feel like I see you all the time because social media. And you know, I got a lot. A lot of your guys in my in your group are uh, such my boys too. Uh, and so I see, I love, and I'm jealous of all the, you always take like a dinner shot bastards. Yeah. Cause you know, you're not going to inside you guys. It's the war room when you have your CEO masterminds. And uh, I know you had a couple recently, um, and you take that dinner shot and everyone's just hanging and chilling and, uh, you're drinking water. Cause you're probably on like, you know, 275 hard, but, uh, <laughs> So let, let's so the CEO Mastermind is a special group, or or a couple. You got a couple now. Uh, those mm -hmm. are the special kids. Um, you do that. You have you have a, a like a kind. Of, do you have like a year end wrap up with them? Is that what that last picture I saw was? Uh, we, well, we meet four times a year, and it just so happens that the uh, well, it's really the first meeting of the year is January, but. In the January meeting, we're doing a lot of the recap uh, of the year. So, yeah. you know, we'll do things like um, people will bring in, you know, what their top line revenue was, what their profit was for the year, and they kind of highlight that. And this past meeting, we have, we have two groups of the way SPF works. Uh, so the regular SPF mastermind is a larger group uh, mastermind. And then I have a, a, a branch of that of some of the the guys that are, you know, really taking it to the next level, they join the CEO mastermind. And the structure of that is we do, um, it's a boardroom style, what, uh, max of 12 in a group. And the way it's structured is um, each each person fills out a document. Uh, document takes a good amount of time to fill out. It's like about four hours uh, to fill out. Um and it's got pretty much a deep dive into their business and everyone reads the document of each person um, to kind of get a view of where they're at. And then they get it to the front of the room and they get an hour in front of the room. We call it a hot seat. They get an hour in front of the room and I'll lead the discussion, but people will weigh in and ask questions. And the goal is that they leave that hot seat with some three to five we usually don't do a lot it's not like a tactical thing right it's not like oh start doing this or like it's more of just like what are the big moves that they need to to make and then they leave with their action steps but the funny thing is a lot of times 
you know, they get usually get value from their own hot seat. But what they tell me is they get just as much value from everyone else's hot seat, right? When someone else gets in the front of the room and they're like, oh my God, I got this exact same problem, right? Uh, so these guys are taking furious notes the entire time. So 12 hot seats, it's like 12 mini seminars for them uh, throughout the, the whole time. Um, so they got up to, the, so there's two groups of 12 right now. I think one group might have 11. So one group of 11, one group of 12. Um, and they all announced what their revenue was before they started their hot seat for their, their sorry, their revenue increase. Mm -hmm. Okay. Their revenue increase in 2023. And I start writing it down and I'm like, start doing some math. <laughs> it's just like, oh, I'm increasing, you know, 200 here, 300 here, 450 here. And I'm like starting to tally up what the uh, revenue increase, not the total revenue yeah. of each business combined, but the revenue increase. And of the 23 gyms, the revenue com combined revenue increase was 4 million, 103,000. Wow. Among 23. And I was just like, holy shit. Like that is like incredible that that was like the revenue in what was supposed to be a down year for gyms. Yeah. These guys are like making that now did every, not, that was an average, right? Yeah, sure. That was the total amount. Yeah, total. It's an average. So some people were higher. Some people were lower. Every one of them grew. There was a, like you asked me right before, did anyone do you detract and shrink? And it's like, no, especially if they're spending all that money to be in that room with me, yeah. they better not shrink. Like they better <laughs> not lead growth. So everyone did grow. Um, and uh, the grow all of the growth well exceeded what the cost of the mastermind was. So I, I felt, I felt okay about that. Yeah. Um, so it was really cool. And, and so for today, what I wanted to, to share is just like, I was thinking about, why like why is this group doing so well when a lot of other guys are struggling right and what were the common things that i could pull from uh the common traits that i've seen in this group that's doing really well um and teach that so that's what the uh the lesson is today very cool vince i just want to before we before you do that, just clarify the CEO mastermind too. Is there a um, for example, it's it's the highest level. So you have the yes. regular mastermind. But so do I let's say I, I join tomorrow, I join your mastermind. Is there a requirement like you gotta be in the mastermind for one year? Cause we gotta get the basics down and then you're allowed to be in the CEO mastermind. I just want to see where these guys are coming from from that perspective. Or can I say, you know, Vince, I've been doing I had this gym for 10 years, I need some help. I want to go directly to the CEO mastermind. We have not ever let anyone in directly into CEO. That has not been in our regular mastermind. So okay. every one of them has been a member first and then they've um, gone into CEO. There is not a requirement of, a, of an amount of time. Um, okay. I'm not, I'm saying I haven't let anyone in immediately I'm not saying I necessarily wouldn't, right? After a conversation, I can tell if a gym owner's ready for something like yeah. this, ready to be in the in a room like that. Um, so I don't really have a specific time requirement, but there is a requirement of being in the SPF mastermind. Um, so no one can be just in CEO because there's so many things that we do in the regular mastermind. Like everyone that's in CEO participates in the regular mastermind. I mean, these yeah. guys are coming to our regular meetings. They're coming on the Wednesday calls. They're they're participating. And if they're not participating, they're getting their staff to participate. Um, so that's where a lot of the common language is is had. What the CEO is, is that it's, it's a much deeper dive into the nitty gritty of their business. Okay. Um, and that's and that's kind of what I'll I'll talk about some of those things today. Yeah, very cool. No, only because I, you know, when I was working with michael hyatt he would do he called them spotlights because he he felt like the, the hot seat was negative uh that's just what i know you're in the hot seat no that's, but um that's soft <laughs> but uh but michael uh would would those those hot seats were amazing exactly yeah. for what you said 
you learn so much from the other ones. So that's why, and I know with Dan Sullivan's program, you have to be making a certain amount of revenue even to get into Dan Sullivan's different levels of mastermind, which I think is, is a good idea because a lot of times, and this is why I'm bringing it up because you talked about those hot seats. You don't want to waste the other guy's time. I mean, like as well, those other gyms, they're trying to learn. They want that accountability. And then if somebody comes up there and they haven't done those things, so I just wanted to see what, what it took to get into that. Uh, and obviously I know a lot of those guys and they're awesome. And uh, anyway, so yeah, um, many of the, I think we have about in the SPF alone, I think we have, uh, I don't know the exact number, right? So I'm, yeah. par I'm, I'm, I'm ballparking this, but I think it's around 23 gyms doing over seven figures across the, the, um, the map across the entire master. There's 101 gyms in SPF. Mm -hmm. Um, and about 23 of them, about 20% roughly are doing well, uh, over seven figures or above. Um, the, a lot of those guys are in the CEO groups, not all. Of yeah. them. There's some that yeah. are in there's some that are not in it that are still, you know, doing, but, but around that number. Yeah. Uh, are, are, are in that ballpark cool so let's get into the five common traits among uh these guys these most successful gyms in in the country so the the first thing i think that i see from these guys is they've gotten uh more financial clarity and one of the reasons that a lot of the guys join the group is because of the process that we go through and the process we go through is there's this deep dive on your business for each quarter, right? And so we'll look at what the goals were, were the goals achieved. We'll look at the accountability chart of the team, meaning like what uh, what players do they have on their squad, what moves need to be made. But attached to that, they have to bring something called their profit and loss statement. And there is nothing like getting naked in front of your buddies and pulling down your pants and saying, hey, this is what this is like. It's like, it's, it's, but it's legitimately like, I call this the no ego CEO mastermind because you can't have an ego to be in this mastermind. You literally are airing everything out. And, but when you're held to that level of accountability every quarter, I have guys in this group, TJ Lopez has been in the group you know, since it started, like two, I mean, five years. Yeah. So I've literally seen TJ Lopez's profit and loss statement four times a year for the last five, like five years. Right. Um, and, and, and so when you're going to do that, the first thing is you don't want to go into a front of room and look like crap. Right. You just don't want to do that. And I think so. Some of that is a little bit, there is a little bit of, and that's not on purpose. Right. But it's really, there is this accountability of, Hey, in three months, I'm going up in front of a bunch of other successful gym owners and showing my stuff. I don't want to, I, I want to grow. I want to push it. And so I think, so the structure of the program shines the light on the importance of the data. And the importance of the numbers, because if we're going to help these guys grow their business, how are we doing it without knowing what is really happening? And we don't know what's really happening if we don't know the financials. Like, have you ever seen the show The Profit with Marcus, Marcus Limonis? It's a show on CNBC. Every business owner should be watching it. Okay. And Marcus, he goes into struggling businesses and what he does is he goes and he turns them around. That's kind of what he does. Every show, there's a scene where he sits down and he says this, all right, let's take a look at the financials. Every show, not one show doesn't have that section. Yeah. Right. Because that is reality. That is what is real. What you can't do is that you get up there in front of the room and be like, you know, I feel like our retention's a little off, or I feel like something's going on with our culture, or I feel like our marketing's not working well. And I feel like, I feel like, I feel like, and the reality is like, it doesn't matter what you feel like. It matters what actually is happening. And the data is what tells you what is actually happening. So we can't have a really good effective mastermind without knowing that stuff. And the problem is, a lot of people don't want to do that. They don't want to face reality yeah. of what it really is. And they don't want to, 
you know, um, expose themselves, especially in front of their peers. So that's why this group is so different than anything else I've ever done. I mean, I've been doing masterminds for however long, you know, 20 something years. I've never been in a mastermind where they looked at your profit and loss statement. And I always wondered why, like, I always wondered why, you know, they, they don't do that. Um, but man, it is. So that is what I think one of the reasons why these guys have been successful is because they have financial clarity. They are looking at these numbers inside and out. They're preparing this document. They're preparing to talk about it. Not only are they preparing for it, they are now getting feedback on their business on what they need to do to succeed based on what these numbers are telling us. So that is one of the things. So that's number one, I think, is these guys get financial clarity simply from the process of the uh, of the CEO group. Yeah, and again, go back to, and I, it's, it's along the same lines. When we had everybody on, all the guys, right, in, in that episode, uh, your best guys, remember we, we had that episode a couple of months ago, every one of them just mentioned about the group too. And it's not just the accountability, it's the responsibility that they feel to kind of uh, help each other and to kind of bring, it's almost like, like I talked to TJ one time about it and he was like, yeah, you know, like those are your boys. So you want to be like, you want to be part of that group and you want to elevate your business for them too, not just for your family and for yourself, but it's like, hey, we're all doing this together. So it's a, it's a huge piece that I've I've gotten from those guys uh, about about the group. So I, so I love it. So get financial clarity. Um, get naked. Should have put that as. So what's uh? Let's go to number two: outsourcing digital marketing. Yeah, and, and again, um, I, I think what I want to just be clear on this point is they. You know, obviously they they're in my group, and and you know that marketing is the thing that I focus on the yeah. most. It's the thing I study the most. It's like uh, I'm not. There's nothing against training. There's nothing against, anything, but just it's just a passion of mine and something I love. Mm -hmm. And I teach that a lot. And I think these guys, a lot of these guys, have taken on that same mentality of I am going to be a marketing minded business owner. Uh, I am going to shine the light on the importance of marketing. I'm not going to bury my head in the sand and say, I'm going to just find a company to do everything for me, all my marketing for me, and just allow me to go around my business, which is the silliest thing in the world. Um, and what they have done uh, across the, I wouldn't say 100%, but almost 100% have outsourced the digital part of their marketing. Okay, and that does two things. The first thing it does, it enables um, the experts to do their job. Okay, um, and so when they outsource the digital marketing, they're outsourcing it to a professional that really is in the thick of it every day. They're looking at Facebook ad accounts. They're looking at cost per lead. They're looking at this stuff all day long. And they're paying attention to it, whereas a gym owner typically is not. They don't have their face buried in it all the time. And so they understood that, okay, if I want to fix my toilet, the best thing I could probably do is not try to go to YouTube and fix it myself. The best thing I could do is call the plumber to fix this toilet because I know nothing about how to fix a toilet. I probably could figure it out. And I probably could, you know, throw something together and maybe make it work. Or I could, you know, flood my entire house at the same time. And so I think these guys have gotten that. They, they get that. All right. This is something that's one, it's changing a lot. The digital side is changing a lot. There's rules and regulations and all these things that you need to be aware of and pay attention to. And most of these have guys have decided, all right. This piece of my business is not the best investment of my time to do this myself. Um, and I'm going to find the trust. And now it does, you know, full disclosure, um, almost everybody in the group uses Kiss Marketing, right? And there's obviously a reason for that. There's a reason for that is because that's the agency that I own. And they know that Kiss Marketing is built around the same marketing principles that I teach. 
that I teach a direct response marketing format. We understand target market. We understand message. We understand offers. And all of that goes into the agency. So you don't have a bunch of nerds you just hired that think they're going to make your website pretty. You have a team of people that get marketing. They get I response. They get and they understand it. And so that's the thing that, so the big move that I think these guys have made is to outsource it. Now the outsourcing is not what's made them successful. Here's what's made them successful. They freed up their own time where other gym owners are tinkering with this stuff and trying to figure it out. And they're wasting all this time. They're spending four hours a day on Facebook, right? These guys are now investing in the other side of their marketing which is the community marketing, the mm -hmm. joint ventures, the referral programs, the email marketing, the things like that, that they personally can have a really big impact. So it's not so much of, oh, we, de we, we, we delegated to Kiss Marketing and they're so awesome and I don't have to do anything for marketing anymore. No, they've checked the box of their digital marketing, of having a good website, of having a good sales CRM and of having good Facebook ads and Instagram. Right? They've checked that box and they know that, all right, I, I have a trusted person that's watching that part, part of my marketing, that part of my marketing. And now what I can do is take the time that I'm saving for them to go do that and invest my time, money, and resources in the old community side, which now we got something that's strong. That is strength. When you can combine those two together, we'll have a strong marketing department. And a lot of the guys did really well this year because of it. Yeah, awesome. And, you know, in in not in your defense, but uh, along with Kiss Marketing, one of the good things is you guys know the business. You know them personally, which is a huge part of marketing. I mean, you have to know what's happening at those that gym and that personality of the gym and what they're good at. You're talking to them four times, minimum four times besides the calls yeah. right you're you're meeting in person and and you're you're on the calls with these guys you know these guys intimately and i think that's a huge part of it too good stuff um your next one is i i'll be honest i didn't i expanding to multiple locations um i wasn't sure if that was part of because you have one location mm -hmm. right um so i what I will say is this, among the growth, the highest growth rate was among the people that opened multiple locations mm -hmm. or had multiple locations. Yeah. Okay. So uh, I, I think we go back to, we've talked about this before with the whole Seth Godin story. A lot of it is what you want to do. There's some people that are very happy with one location and that is fine. Yep. If you want to make the most money, you should have multiple locations. Okay. okay that's, sure. If you want to, here's the thing. I, I don't know a ton of people with one location in gyms like ours, right? That are, that are uh, one standalone that's doing personal training type of stuff that doesn't have like a 50,000 square foot, you know, Equinox style gym. Yeah. But a 5,000 square foot personal training based gym, there's only so much money that you can make out of that one place. Yeah. Yep. There's just, there, there is only, you, you can't sugarcoat that it's there's reality. Um, so the guys that are expanding the most, if you look at the highest growth among that number of the, of the 4 million growth rate, the highest numbers were the guys that opened up multiple. Right. And so a lot of the guys are following that path. A lot of them. And the guys that are following the path, they want to do more. And the guys that aren't following the plot that came in, maybe saying, Hey, I'm kind of good with one. They're seeing what the Devin gauges of the world are doing. They're seeing what the varsity house is doing. Even TJ opening multiple, right? They're, they're seeing what these guys are doing and they're like, Oh shit. These guys are killing it. These guys are doing well. I'm going to do it. So now we have guys that are on board and we have a lot. I mean, I can't tell you every day there's a new location opening in our mastermind. We have a guy um, in our mastermind, Chad Blair. He just launched another location. He opened with 75 members. Kiss ran the pre-sale for him, opened up with, with 75 members right off the bat. Like that is absolutely incredible. And um, so, so, so I think that if you want to really grow and you want to make a lot of money, that is a, that is a way to do it. 
So, uh, Vince, and not can this, I, again, I said, it's not for everybody. It's yeah. not for everybody. Can you but expand if you want to make the most money? That's it. Can you expand just on what that location might look like? Is it, uh, you know, is it another, you know, Gabriel fitness, uh, you know, 20 miles away and in the same blueprint is like, is it almost like a franchise type idea or is it a smaller version? How, how does this work for the most part? It's very hard to scale complexity. That's the biggest piece of advice that I could give anyone that wants to open up multiple, even if you want to open up two, it's very hard to scale complexity. And so without giving away, because there is a, a sauce to this without giving it away on this podcast, being mm -hmm. honest, um, they are making things simple. They're making things easier. They are making it, um, they're using a model that I teach called more from less, meaning they can make more money with less clients. They can make more money with less square footage. They can make more money with less trainers. So they're following this type of, of model, again, without giving the whole model away of what they're doing, because some of the guys are following a very specific recipe. Um, uh, but that recipe is in the form of something that is simple, easy, scalable, um, and easy to do several times over. So you wouldn't want to take a big 10,000 square foot monster that does one-on-one -on -one and you do small group and you do large group and you do sports performance and you do yoga and you have a juice bar and you have this, like trying to scale that is very, very difficult. Now, obviously it can be done. You look at like a lifetime fitness of the world, you know, that can be done, but I think it's a whole different game that they're playing with the investor money and not even investor, you know, venture capital and things like that. Yeah. So I think for us, for the people that are listening to this podcast, if you do want to open up multiple, it's going to be hard to take a complex business and duplicate that over and over and over again. Yeah. And so the, the advice I have is to keep it simple. Cool. Cool. Um, let's move on to number four. Uh, Higher standards, drawing a line in the sand. What what exactly do you mean by that? So um, some of the people, this is not everybody, but some of the people got into the group and they were doing okay, right? But they were kind of like frustrated, right? Uh, and to some standards, you may, on the outside, you may look at, oh, they're doing really well. But they were like kind of frustrated. They were having this really slow growth. And I, I can, you know, pinpoint to a couple people that did really, really well in 2023. And a couple people just got fed up. They were just pissed off. They were looking at the other people in the room and they were like, this guy's kicking ass over here. Like, what's going on with me? And they kind of even privately explained that to me. They're like, you know, I've been working at this a long time. I'm okay with where I'm at, but I'm watching this guy over here. And I'm just like, I know I can do better, right? And there's this moment, I think, where some of these guys draw the line in the sand. And it's like, I'm not accepting mediocrity anymore. And what they needed to do was raise their standards. They needed to raise their standards for their own level of personal productivity they need to raise their standards for what they expected from their staff. They need to raise their standards for what they expected from their marketing. They need to raise their standards for how they ran their business. And they drew the line in the sand. And I can think of a couple people in the group that did absolutely outstanding and came in very frustrated and did absolutely outstanding because they were just almost like, no more. Enough's enough. I'm stopping the struggle. I'm stopping this tread in water. I'm going to take this to the next level and I'm going to do this. And so the, some of it is around this mindset shift that some of the guys have, right? It's this mindset shift. And I, sometimes being in the room like that can help you change your mindset shift. Um, but I saw this sure. with a good handful of people that just like, I'm not accepting this anymore. And then raise their level of, of expectation of themselves and their business. And I saw a huge difference in the people that did that. Very cool. And I think that is a good segue because when you do that, you can, one of your favorite and first things you do, raise your prices. Yeah. You, know, when I, you, I, yeah. You, you feel better about yourself too. You have to get to a feeling of having that higher standard, right? 
you know, because I think that seemed in past episodes, what you talked about seems to be the barrier. Sometimes people feel like, well, it's a little too much. I'm not, I'm not worth it almost. Right. So uh, expand on this one. Yeah. Uh, most of the guys in the group raised their prices. Uh, some of them raised them more than once uh, in, in a given year. Uh, and, and you're right, Anthony, it's a really good point is that a lot of the things that needed to happen f- to raise your price come from, you know, what's going on inside of our own minds and how we feel about ourselves and how we feel about our business. Um, if you feel crappy about your business, you're probably not going to raise your prices. If you feel great and confident about your business, you probably will. Uh, so many of the guys um, made changes to the way they were pricing. Some increased their prices on everybody. Some increased their prices on current on uh, uh, new members going forward. Some changed the way they presented price in terms of their packaging. But they all made changes to how much money they were charging. Um, and I think a lot of those changes equated to some of the big changes in revenue. Uh, that these guys had, but you, that it's a really, really good point, Anthony. Uh, a price raise or changes to your price is all about what's going on inside your mind. Um, and as you get more confident about what you're doing, uh, the price raise will follow. Very cool. What an impressive, uh, again, what an impressive group. And what's interesting is, uh, I'm sure the big mastermind, the main, the, you know, the first one, not the CEO one. Uh, has if we're if we're throwing those guys in there too, I'm sure that number is just ridiculous of like that oh yeah increase in revenue <laughs> oh yeah I mean here's the thing there's guys that are not in CEO that are right just in SPF that are kicking ass like so that is not let's it's not like everyone in it like everyone CEO is great but the SPF mastermind has some really 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 good gym leaders in it so yeah I can't imagine I should actually do that number uh, yeah. <laughs> it would probably be pretty it would probably be pretty big um and and you know it's funny um and i you should definitely come down but we have our next mastermind meeting in orlando uh on march uh 8th and 9th so if you want to come down you can be my personal guest All right. cool, uh cool. and come check it out but we're doing uh, a theme i think we talked about it a little bit last time but the theme is think and grow rich uh for gym owners which i'm super excited about i've kind of taken the uh uh, did we talk about it? No, no, we didn't. Oh, no. oh man, oh shit. So think. So the theme of the of the mastermind for two days is think and grow rich for gym owners. It's a play on obviously the most popular personal development and business book ever written was Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill, right? Um, but what I'm doing is I'm taking a lot of the principles of Napoleon Hill's teachings. And I'm wrapping it into how people can have a more successful gym and make more money and have more, you know, have a richer life uh, from those principles. So it's going to be awesome. I'm super excited. You should come, dude. It'd be great. Definitely I, come. I love that idea. You know, what's yeah. funny is um, in December, I got the book. I started listening to my father knew the secret, which was from Brian Proctor and really it's, but if anybody doesn't know Bob Proctor, his, Bob Proctor changed his life with Think and Grow Rich in 1963. He always had the book. He always showed the book. He, he like outlined it. It's the original book that he got. And so he started die. And then I, I went back to um to Bob's stuff, more of Bob's stuff. And I I went back and and listened to more of um just more like things like uh uh Think and Grow Rich. Um the uh the um I think it was the um what you call it the the synopsis of it like somebody did a somebody did a synopsis of it right so it wasn't the whole book but it was so it was really cool and i just took a deep dive back into some of those very uh think and grow rich um uh, uh influences right yeah. uh the, the guy that uh bob proctor worked for i forget his name right now off the top of my head anyway uh but you know just really kind of taking more of a deep dive this year into the think and grow rich theme um so yeah i might have to come down to orlando Dude, for that. Total, totally come down i'm super super i've never been more excited to teach a seminar my entire life and uh it's going to be outstanding almost everybody's coming um and if 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 someone listening to this is interested in mastermind or get you know, this is a great way to test drive it so we we do have guest passes where they can come as a guest so they don't have to join the mastermind to come 
uh, they can actually purchase a guest pass just to come to the event and see what it's all about. So it's actually a good, that's how a lot of people actually do join the group. A lot of people join the group by coming as a guest to the event yeah. and then like, oh my God, this is a really cool, you know, community of people. And then they end up joining. Um, but I'll put a link, uh, I'll give you the, send you the link. Uh, there's okay. like a, la a landing page on it that has the agenda and it has like the speakers and, you know, what the different topics are and, and stuff like that. Cool. So, um, we'll put that, uh, that link is in the show notes. Um, but if anyone has any questions and they, I don't, um, do this, I should do this more, but if anyone has any questions and they just want to email me, um, stuff, they just send it to Vince at gabrielfitness.com. I still have a Gabriel fitness email. I've yet to have, I don't have every one of my team members has a Vince Gabriel email. I, I feel weird about having my email be Vince at vincegabriel.com. I don't know why I just feel <laughs> weird about it. So I haven't done yet. So my actual personal email is just Vince at Gabriel fitness, uh, okay. com. But if you're interested and you want to shoot me an email, um, that's fine too, but we'll put the link in the show notes, but yeah, dude, you should come for sure. Cool. Very cool. All right, Vince, thanks for doing this, bud. All right, brother. Talk to you.